be strong. So let's talk about addition and what your child needs to know when it comes to addition. You know, you really start addition right right off when you're in preschool. Counting is the beginning, is the first steps to addition. So you think about when your child's in preschool and they're just learning how to count and they're doing one, two, three, four, and they're 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 counting all the way up to six or maybe ten or twenty. That's really is the first steps of addition because you may have your child deal with, you know, what's one, two, and what's the very next one? Well, it's gonna be three. They're learning to add, but they don't know it right yet. So the very first step when it comes to addition is learning how to count. And you want to make sure your child is able to do that. You help them do that quite a bit. So for instance, if we were to take a situation in early elementary school, children will start to understand that their counting leads to it adding. So when you have one, you know, two, as we talked about, three, and then you, you have four, and then what's what comes right after that? If I had four plus one, what's the next thing that comes? Four plus one, well, that's going to be five. So your child will start to see that that adding It's really a part of counting and that counting leads to addition and adding and counting are related when it comes to addition. They're very much related. And you think about it, one of the next things your child will have to do is start to notice the patterns that they see when it comes to addition, which has to do all with accounting as well. It's all related. And I remember actually doing this when I was in elementary school. I actually did this and you've probably done similar things when you were younger. But let's take, for example, we have six plus three is equal to nine. And I know 6 plus 4 is 10 and 6 plus 5 is 11. And I keep kind of going 6 plus 12 is 6 plus 6 is, is 12. Well, then I know if I have 6 plus 13, if I have 6 and 3 in the ones place, that's going to be 19. So 6 and 13 is going to be 19. And I can kind of see the patterns that develop. If 6 and 4 is 10, then 6 plus 14 is going to be 20. And 6 plus 15 is going to be 21, just like 6 plus 5 is 11. And sure enough, if 6 plus 6 is equal to 12, then 6 plus 16 is going to be equal to 22. Start to think about the patterns that your child will see. And we're going to just kind of walk through this a little bit because it's very important to learn and to begin to know. So let's say we have 7 plus 3, and we may automatically know that that's 10. So we have to be able to do this kind of in our minds and kind of think, okay, well, 10, 7 plus 3 is 10, then 7 plus 4 must be 11, and 7 plus 5 must be 12, and 7 plus 6 is 13. And as we start to look at the patterns that form, if I do 7 plus 13, I know that's going to be 20. If I do 7 plus 14, that's going to be 21. If I do 7 plus 5 or 15, that's going to be 22. And if I do 7 plus 16, it's going to be 23. You start to automatically do your mind and you understand that if I'm going up by 10, I'm going to go up by 10 in the answer. And if I were to do 7 plus 26, that's going to be 33. So that's going to help me as well figure out the patterns with that. Let's take a look at some more because this is so important to do. Let's kind of look at the eights a little bit and let's, let's look at that. So if I have eight plus three, what's that, what's that going to be? So that's going to be 11. So eight plus four is going to be 12. Kind of looking at that. Eight plus five is going to be 13. Eight plus six is going to be 14. Eight plus 13 is going to be 21. We've got the patterns there. Eight plus 14 is going to be 22. Eight plus 15, we guess that it's going to be 23. If you can guess what eight plus 16 is going to be, that's going to be 24. So you can compare the patterns that you see. When you have 8 and 6 in the 1's place, there's going to be a 4 in that 1's place no matter what. You just got to figure out which which problem, which numbers you're dealing with so you know how high to go. So that it kind of gives you a heads up with that. So let's say we we take it a step further and we look at 8 plus 7. If I have 8 plus 7, I know I'm going to have 15, right? And if I have 8 plus 8, I'm going to have 16. If I have 8 plus 9, I'm going to have 17. If I have 8 plus 10, I'm going to have 18. That kind of jumps out to you, right? So 8 plus 17, because I know 8 plus 7 is going to be 15, I know that 8 plus 17, because there's an 8 and a 7 in the 1's place, I'm going to have a 5 in the 1's in the place in this answer. So 8 plus 17 is going to be 25. I know that automatically. 8 plus 18 is going to be 26, because there's an 8 and 8 in the 1's place. 8 plus 19 is going to be 27. And 8 plus 20 is going to be 28. So that kind of gives you the ability to kind of see some of the patterns here. But let's walk through it because there's, there's no substitute for practice, right? There's no substitute for walking through these things and working through them. So let's say I have 9 plus 3. Let's kind of go through some of the 9s that we'll see and the patterns that we'll see with 9. Well, 9 plus 3 is going to be 12. And I know if I have 9 plus 13, it's going to be 22. But let's kind of go through this. 9 plus 4 is going to be 13. So a 9 and a 4 is going to produce a 3 in the 1's place, right? A 9 and a 5 is going to produce a 4 in the 1's place. It's going to be 14. A 9 and a 6 is going to produce 15. So if I go on our other side and look at this, 9 plus 13 is 22. 
9 plus 14 is 23. It's going to be 23 there. 9 plus 15, because I have a 9 and a 5 in that 1's place, is going to be a 4 in the answer. So that's going to be 24. I know that's going to be 24. 9 plus 16 is going to be 25. So I can see these patterns jumping out. You really want to take the time to notice the patterns with your child. And once you notice the patterns with your child, you want to start to build proficiency. You want to start to now work at these problems and kind of understand, you know, I should know off the top of my head that 16 plus 2 is 18 or 17 plus 1 is 18. You want to have your child start to work with these so they can kind of in quick succession be able to understand and to build proficiency with this and be able to do it kind of off the top of their heads. And then the next thing you move with your child is to think about place value. So let's think about, you know, each place in a number has a value to it. So let's say I have these nine balls here and I just added one. I have 10 balls. And what happens when I have 10 balls, we basically take a group of 10 and we begin to group it by itself. Whenever we get 10 of something in a certain place in a, in a number, we begin to group it. So we, we take that over there and this one group of 10 is now called a 10. So on, on, on the right hand side, I had nine balls and I add, added one more and I grouped that 10 and I just pushed it over to the left and I have one group of 10 instead of in one place, I'm going to have one group of 10. And what that essentially means when you start to group things when they come to 10 is that we have place values for each place in a number. So on the far right hand, this number has four ones, right? And it has nine tens and it has one hundreds. And what happens is each space can hold up to nine units. So once we get more than nine in one space, we got to carry over and group it as a 10, just like we did in a previous slide. So we'll group it once we get over nine and we get 10, we're going to group that 10 to the next side, if you will. So, so let's, let's see how this looks and what this looks like when it comes to carrying over and what this looks like an actual problem, right? So let's say I have 109 plus 83. And I can automatically see that 9 plus 3, as we know, is 12. So that's actually 10 ones plus 2 ones. So it's a group of 10, and it's 2 ones left over. So I'm going to take that 2, and I'm going to put it right there, and I'm going to carry over that 10 to the tens place. So now instead of 8 tens, I have 9 tens. When I have, I have 9 tens, and I have 100. So this is 192. That's 100, 9 tens, and 2 ones. And this allows us to, to kind of carry over and, and, and to understand our place value. But let's do it as we start to grow and get bigger. We're going to do it larger and larger numbers. So let's say we have 2109 plus 343. And again, we have 9 plus 3 in the ones place. So that's going to give us 10 ones, right? 10 ones plus 2 ones. So we're going to take those, that, those 2 ones, carry over that 10, and instead we're going to have 5 in the tens place now. And then we're going to end up having 4 in the hundreds place because 3 plus 1 is 4. And we're going to have that 2 in the thousands place. So your child will have to start to understand how to do this with larger and larger numbers. So the answer to this is 2,452. And so this is a stepping stone. They won't do this all the way. It won't happen all in one grade. They'll be doing this over the course of you know, the first few years, first three or four years in, in elementary school. But you can see your child's going to have to build on these skills and learn more and more with larger and larger numbers as they move through addition. Then the next thing they're going to start doing, they're going to start to apply this. Let's say we apply this with decimals, right? So we start to apply this with decimals. And what do you do with decimals? You don't have to do anything differently. You already learned how to add. You know how to count. You know how to carry over. All you have to do with decimals is just line up the decimal places when it comes to adding. So let's say we're dealing with money. And we have $2.09 plus $3.40. Well, we're going to have 9 in that place right there. And that's actually going to be the, the cents place. We'll start to learn about what, what that means in a second. And then we have 4 right there. And all we have to do is line up that decimal place. Your child will begin to know what, what tenths are and hundreds are. They'll begin to know that. But the basics of addition will be there. They just have to know how to line up those decimal places and they'll start to learn the concepts when it comes to these things and not just how to add because they already know how to add. They're just going to apply it to concepts. And other concepts they'll need to apply it to will be fractions. They'll start to do fractions and they'll add and subtract fractions with like denominators and unlike denominators. They'll start to work with negative numbers. There are a number of things they'll do, but they'll already have built the foundations for good addition skills, right? They already have their addition skills there. So in some we'll kind of look at this because your child's done a lot if they've learned these these aspects and these concepts when it comes to addition. First of all, you want to make sure they learn how to count. They got to learn how to count because that's the beginning of addition. Then they'll begin to actually add and to add numbers together. And then they'll start to look for patterns and recognize patterns like 9 plus 3 is 12. And what that means is they go higher and higher in numbers, right? They'll start to recognize patterns. And then they'll build proficiency and they'll be able to do this faster and faster and easier and easier for them because they'll come to them very easy as they build proficiency with this. And then they'll start to learn about place value and carrying over. And then finally, they'll start to work with larger and larger numbers and be able to apply this in different situations. These are some of the things your child should learn when it comes to addition. Strong. Strong. Ooh. 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 Ooh.
Thank you.